Good morning. Good to see all of you here today. Good to have you this morning. Uh, I'm sure there's some folks that forgot to turn their clocks back, forward, whatever it is. Uh, I wish they'd do it 30 minutes and leave it alone if you ask me, but that's just my opinion. Uh, it's good to see you here this morning. If you got your bulletins, there are several announcements in your bulletin. Uh, make sure that you're aware of those. Make sure that you take a good look at those. Uh, but there's uh, two announcements I want to emphasize this morning uh, for sure. Let's get out of you doing that. Uh, next Sunday, we will be taking up a low offering for Linda and Eddie Allen. Uh, if y'all know that their son is uh, in uh, critical condition in Galveston in the hospital after a car wreck. Uh, so we pray for them. He's had uh, a couple of successful surgeries, uh, but we pray for them and, and uh, be lifting them up. And then I'll remember next Sunday we'll have a love offering for them as well. The second thing is, is if you are part of Sunday school, or if you're a Sunday school teacher or the director of Sunday school, and I've asked a few extra to come, but... It, Right after church this morning, right after the service this morning, we're going to have a Greeter 101. Uh, this is something I think is very important to our church, very important to the people that come to our church. If you want to be a part of that, or if you want to know what that's all about, come to the fellowship hall after that's over with, and you can learn a little bit about it. Uh, if you want to just be nice to people, come over there and we'll talk about it. Okay? Some of you, I know it's hard to be nice to people, but that's, that would be me, but that's all right. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. If you see somebody this morning you haven't spoken to, I'm going to ask that you rise at this moment and go speak to them. Come forward and let's have a 
morning off. Morning off. Heavenly Father, we come to you thank you for this time. Thank you for blessing and this. Thank you for your goodness, Lord, that even though we don't deserve it, that you've blessed us with this opportunity to you care for us, Lord. Just thank you for the blessing you give us in this life. Pray for this offering today, Lord, that we give back for your honor and your glory, Lord. Just pray you bless it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Oh, 
Father, we thank you that we can come before you. Lord, in this place today, that you are willing to meet us here. Father, you are, you are pouring out into this group of people right here in our church today. So Lord, I pray for response from us as to who you are, Lord, to show others. Pour into us so that we can show others your glory and who you are, Father. The great I am, the God above all gods, chooses us to show his glory. Oh, what a responsibility, church. And Lord, we thank you that you give it to us. But Lord, we're, we're undeserving, if not for the cross. So Lord, thank you that you led, led me to the cross. Thank you that you led this church, Lord, before the cross so that we could have that forgiveness. Lord, I pray for others in this room today. Lord, that you call them to you in this place, in this very place today, as we continue to worship. Thank you. 
see your light is breaking through the dark of night. May I not overtake me? I am pressing in. your Bibles this morning turn to John chapter 4. Kids, you can go. Kids, not the adults. I sure wish some of y'all get that excited about coming to church. John chapter 4, we'll begin in the 31st verse. If you recall, when we began chapter 4, we talked about a divine appointment. That Jesus has a divine appointment with, with each and every one of us. Uh, those were in the first few verses of this chapter. Uh, he wants to have that divine appointment, and he will place us in a place that we can have that divine appointment. Uh, the second thing that we studied in this chapter is a divine offering. Jesus Christ offers us life. He offers us living water. Uh, water that we cannot obtain from the earth, but only water that we can, can obtain from heaven in a relationship with Jesus Christ. And he is that offering as we sing about. He's the one who died on the cross. He's the one who covers us with his blood. He offered himself for us. The third thing that we discussed in chapter 4 was a divine confession. 
of who Jesus is and who he, is, who he said he is. He says, I am the great I am. I am the one and only. I am the true God. I am the only way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. A divine confession of the woman at the well. She recognized that he was someone different. He recognized, or she recognized that he was someone out of the ordinary, that he was someone that needed to be listened to, someone that she needed to learn from. And he also confessed to her, the one that you're looking for, the one that you need to replace whatever you're looking for, am I. Jesus tells us that our life will never be the same when we ask him into our heart. He brings about peace and comfort in the storms. He doesn't say the storms won't come. He says that we'll have an anchor in those storms, that we will not be moved because of that anchor that he has for us. So we must have that divine appointment. We must understand that he offers something that is divine, not something of this wor world. And he also, we need to confess who he is and who he should be in our life. With all that said, today we're going to look at a divine harvest. John chapter 4, beginning in the 31st verse. I'm going to ask if you would rise out of reverence to the reading of God's holy, infallible word. Meanwhile, the disciples were argue, urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? And Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you, say, do you not say that you know, there are yet four months when comes the harvest? I tell you, look, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For there is a saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap for that which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered their labor. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this morning. Father, I ask now that you remove me from this pulpit. Father, that you clear my mind, clear my heart of anything that would obstruct your going forth of your word. Father, use me as a tool to preach and to teach your word. Help me not to be distracted by life, by things of earth. Father, but I am dead set on your word. Father, because it doesn't matter what I say. The only thing that matters is what you say. Father, I pray for ears to hear your word this morning. Father, that we will be changed in an instant. Father, we realize that we need to live a life that is glorifying to you and only you. Father, help us to love each other. Help us to further your kingdom and to glorify your name. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Have you ever been distracted by anything? Have you allowed stuff in your life to distract you from what you should be doing or where you should be going or, or things happen in your life that distract you from the important things? Am I the only one that is distracted easily by things. Uh, you know, we call it in my house squirrel. You know, that's just a change of uh, squirrel. You know, uh, I can be easily distracted. But I, I want to make sure that we understand this morning, when we go through life, life is mundane. And God never meant it to be mundane. He meant for us to have a service. He meant for us to have a life that is pleasing to him in love and in service to him, to glorify his name. And we allow the things that are mundane in this earth to distract us from those things. We get worried about what we're going to eat, where we're going to go, and most of you are thinking about dinner right now. Don't lie, I know, because I'm thinking about it myself. What are we going to have today? We get distracted from what God wants us to hear and what God wants us to do because we think it's important. 
But in our life, God should be the ultimate thing in our life. He should be of the ultimate importance in our life. He should be what leads everything else. It's easy to get distracted. It's easy to let things of the earth distract you from what you ought to be doing. A lot like time change. It distracts us from what we call to do, what we're called we, what we should do is come to church. I guarantee it wouldn't matter if the time changed, if we were going fishing or going to a baseball game or going hunting or whatever, that time change wouldn't distract us. But yet, we let it distract us from coming to church. We let the mundane things of the earth distract us from worshiping a holy God. And we as a church should gather. We should be excited about what God is, is doing in our midst, what he's doing in our life. Uh, you know, it, it don't hurt to shout every now and then. Uh, don't bring a snake up in here because I hurt you. <laughs> but it, it really doesn't hurt to, snap, to shout every now and then. Praise God for what he's doing in your life. Even in the midst of the storm, he is good. He doesn't move. He's always there. Oh, how I get distracted. Oh, how I think things of this earth worry me when I should be worrying about glorifying God. Y'all hear what's on my heart this morning, right? I want you to understand what's on my heart this morning. We've got to quit letting stuff distract us from what God's called us to do. The mundane things of the world. The things that we think are important have no eternal importance. The things that we put our money to and put our time to have no eternal importance. Yet Jesus says that there is something that is important, and that's the person sitting next to you's life. Because we are the bearer. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are the bearer of life and light to this lost and dying world. And we push it aside for other things. There ain't nobody in this room that loves football more than I do. I absolutely love it. I love to see two men beat each other to death. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, you can't even play football anymore. Everybody gets hurt too easy. Well, it's, nah, I ain't going to go there. Just leave it alone. I can be distracted by football. I can be distracted by fishing. I can be distracted by hunting. I can be distracted by nothing. Especially social media. Ooh, we spend so much time on them phones and them iPads when we need to be spending time with the Lord. Our life would be a whole lot better. And I guarantee if you'd pour your drama out to him, he'd give you a solution better than somebody else on Facebook. We get distracted by the things of earth. I'm guilty, I know it. I've been distracted. For the last couple of weeks, I've been distracted. I'll confess to you that I've been distracted. And I need to quit that. I need to do what God called me to do. And quit worrying about the things of earth. I've got to do it. As I began to read that scripture, see if you hadn't been here on Wednesday night, you wouldn't know where I was coming from. You know it's required. Every life in this room is on my hands. Every life in this room and in this church is on my hands you don't believe me go read ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17 there's a lot of pressure that comes from that and it's easily distracted from what i need to be doing see it's important to me for you to hear the truth because the truth will set you free from the worldly things that distract us. You see, as we look at our story, and if we look at, it, at the Bible, what it teaches us today, the, the divine harvest, uh, we, we see that the, the men, of the disciples of Jesus, they come back up on Jesus, and after Jesus is talking to a woman, much less a Samaritan woman, uh, which was not cool back in the day, but back in their days, first of all, it was women were not regarded as anything. Just to be honest, y'all, women right people, just think about how, you, woo, you go back in them days and see how you like it. You were second rate. You were not even considered an individual. 
They would not discuss theology with women, much less talk to their own wives in public. So they're looking at this guy, and they're going, what in the world is he doing? He's, he's at this well by himself with this woman, you know, and he's talking to her. They've been sent to town to get something to eat. They've been sent out into the world to do a job. It's not just to go get some food, but to sow into the world. It says, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, has, has someone, anyone brought anything to him to eat? And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. He, Jesus says, I will not be distracted by hunger. I will not be distracted by the things of the earth because I have something else that is more important, and that's winning the lost. I need to lay myself aside. I need to lay myself down. Our problem is, is we don't lay ourselves before God. We only lay ourselves before God when it's convenient. We don't get bare bones in the face of Jesus anymore because it will cause us to be different. It will cause us out of darkness into the light. And the light shines in that darkness so that we can remove it. Meanwhile, they were doing the mundane things of the earth. Meanwhile, they went to the grocery store to get some groceries. Now, y'all can look at me and tell I like groceries. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with groceries. I'm not saying there's anything about going and getting groceries. What I am saying is that we don't need to let the mundane things of earth distract us from the truth. And it can. And it will. If we let it. If we are not in a fellowship with Jesus Christ, if we're not doing the will of the Father through the blood of Jesus Christ, then it will distract us. It's funny how when I used to work... <laughs> <laughs> that sounded funny to say. <laughs> Y'all just don't know. A secular job, let me put that in there. I'd get up and get a pack of nabs and a Mountain Dew and I'd be gone. I may or may not have anything to eat for lunch. And when I get home, I'd eat supper. You see, I was busy during the day. I was preoccupied with my job. I, I allowed it to control my life during the day. I had to do my job, and I did it well. Jesus is saying, I have a job, and that's to do the Father's will, and I'm not going to let something like food distract me from it. You see, it's more important for me not to eat right now and to reach out to the world. It's more important for me to lay this stuff aside because the Father will sustain me. I don't need it. What I need is him and his glory. What I need is for him to direct me. I need to live in him and allow him to live through me. That's what he's saying here. I, I got food. I got, I got the word of God to eat on. I got the bread of life to eat on. I don't need the things of the world to carry me through. And neither do we. Now, I don't... don't Go out of here and say, well, preacher said I should starve because you can look at me and tell I'm not going to starve. But we need to quit letting the things of the world distract us. The simple thing of eating. He was more worried about his, the, the, the dead that were going to, to, go to, to go to hell than he was eating. How many of us are more worried about that than eating? Much less going to a ball game or going hunting or going fishing or you just put it in there. I could make all of you mad if I just kept going down the list. It's important that we do the work of God and that we do it in such a way that glorifies the Father. You see, we keep waiting on somebody else to do it. We keep waiting on the preacher to do it or the people that's leading the music or the Sunday school teachers to do it or, or somebody else to do it. And Jesus said, if you know me as your Lord and Savior, I tell you to go, not to sit sour and soak. Get up, move. 
This, this greeting 101 that, that, that we're talking about doing, we're talking about doing something just to be, be good to folks and be the good folks around us and welcome them into the house of God. Is, is there anybody in this house that can't say good morning? We love you. Can I help you? Very few, I would say. If, if your job required it of it, you'd do it, wouldn't you? If your job required you to be nice and polite and welcome folks in the door like the Walmart greeter, you'd do it, wouldn't you? How much more should we not have that passion for the lost coming into our church or our brothers and sisters who may or may not be in trouble, who may or may not need somebody to lift them up? It's amazing what a smile will do. Y'all smile every now and then to help me out. I promise you. You say amen too. Won't hurt nothing. But we, we allow the things of the world to distract us from our purpose. He says, do, do you not say there, there are yet four months until uh, the, the harvest comes? There's a harvest coming. What are you doing to prepare for it? I truly believe that there's a harvest coming for Three Creeks Baptist Church. What are you doing to prepare for it? Pastor can't do it alone. Pastor needs every last one of y'all to help. We all have a place in God's house. We need to find it, and we need to be about his work. I, you know, I, I want you to join the church. I want you to be a part of the church, but I don't want you to come here and be dead weight. That sounded ugly, didn't it? But that's the truth. The very least you can do is pray. The very least you can do is pray. We need to work together to glorify God, to excite this community, to excite everybody around it, about, not about who we are, but about who Jesus is and who God is and what he can do in their life, in their troubled times, in the things that go on. The harvest is coming, y'all. The harvest is ready. Are we ready to go? There is a divine harvest of lost people. And yet we're sitting on our hands not doing anything. Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. I believe in that. Bible said it, right? Jesus planted the seed in this woman's heart. Jesus planted a seed in her life that she needed him. Now it was up to them to cultivate that seed. It was up to them to water that seed. It was up to them to, to bring the harvest off of that seed. He did the work. Now all they got to do is reap it. He said, lift up your eyes and see the fields are white with a harvest. We keep our head buried in an iPad, iPhone, or something else all the time, and we ever see people come by us who need to know Jesus. We're distracted. And if Satan can keep us distracted, he will. He'll use anything he can to distract us. Be it alcohol, be it sex, be it iPad, be it whatever it might be, he will use whatever it is to distract us. And yet God wants us to be about our work. He wants us to go out and reap. And, and, and the wonderful thing is, in, in verse 36, he says, Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for what? Eternal life. It's not about the things that we can have around here. It's about what is done in eternity. Because what is done in here is done in eternity. It's of internal importance that we teach people about Jesus Christ, that we reach the lost so that they will know him. It's of eternal importance that we give them that life. And it has to do with all of us. It says, so the sower and the reaper may what? Rejoice together. We should be excited when people come to our church. We should be excited when the waters of that baptistry is stirred. We should be excited when somebody comes down front and says, I have put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. We should be happy to know that they have gone from sin to life, that they've gone from death to life. It should excite us to want to go out and tell somebody else. You see, we need sowers and we need reapers. We need waterers and cultivators. 
It's all of our responsibilities. It's everybody's responsibility. We need to be about God's work. Why? Because eternity is at stake. Someone's eternity is at stake. Jesus wanted to fulfill the will of the Father, and he was satisfied doing it. Turn with me to John chapter 17. <clears throat> John chapter 17, verse 4. John chapter 17, verse 4, it says, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with glory that I have, uh, that I have with you before the world existed. He says, my work is done. I have done the work that you called me to. Work. Not vacation. Not when you want to, but work. If you showed up at work like you show up at church, you would be fired. Just saying. It's okay to smile. It's all right. I'm just telling you the truth. You see, I want to work with you. I want you to be a part of my family. I want to be a part of your family. I want to work with you because I want to see God do great things. But if you think I'm going to do it, well, let me rephrase that. If you think I can do it, if you've put me in a place that I shouldn't be in your life, take me down, please, and put God there. Put Jesus there. Because I'm not the one you need to follow. He is. I I'm not the one you need to, to, to glorify. He is. I'm just a worker. I'm just a laborer. I may be the sower, and I may be the reaper, I may be the cultivator, I may be something, but I want to do what God wants me to do, and I want him to be the one who gets glorified. Please don't get me on a pedestal. Please don't put me there, because you put even more pressure on me, and you even put more attacks from Satan on me. You see, we need to work together to glorify God. I may be a sower of God's word, but I need some reapers. I need some cultivators. I need some waterers. And you cannot do that and walk in this world. They were distracted. The disciples were distracted about eating. They were distracted because he was talking to some woman. They, they were distracted about the things of earth. And yet Jesus says, hey, look what you got sitting in front of you. Look at what the opportunity that you have to witness to a lost person. Forget about eating. Forget about your, your religious right. Forget about those things that are in the bylaws. Forget about those things. Let's worry about those that are unsaved. Let's worry about those Christians that call themselves Christians that are living in sin, yet they come to church and think, oh, it's all right. I'm going to live in sin this week, but I'll be back to church next week. If the decision you made down here didn't change the life you live, then you didn't make the right decision. It's important. Verse 37, it's for here the saying holds true, one sows and one reaps. I send you to reap that which you have not labored. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Look, Jesus said, I go before you. I go, I've already done the work. All you got to do is show up for work. I've already set it in motion. I've already pricked their heart. I've already laid that burden upon them. All you got to do is show up for work. The labor's already been done. Start reaping. Start reaping what I have sown. Start reaping what I've already put in their heart. Start reaching out. It 
So many people in our world today are so confused over who Jesus is and what is right and what is wrong. So many people are confused by us of what is right and what is wrong. Because we do not live the life that Jesus asked us to live. Don't get me wrong. We all sin. We all do, don't do the things that we should do a lot of times. But I have yet to go to the cross that Jesus didn't say your sin has been forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Paul says, should we live in sin so that we can have more grace? He says, absolutely not. You see, that grace should change us and should change the sin that's in our life. We should be a work in progress. We should be more like Christ each and every day. We should strive to be like him so that the world can say, you know what? That old dude, he's had some troubles. He hadn't been the best person in the world. But Jesus has changed his life. Man, I want some of that. That's what the world needs to look at us. They, 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 don't, they need to know we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. I don't know everything. But I know the one who does. And I know where to find it. It's right here. You see, he's already laid the foundation. I just need to show up for work. He's already sown the seed. He's already watered it. I just need to show up for work. How many of us are willing to show up for work? And I ain't talking about once a month or twice a month. I'm talking about show up for work. Let me tell you about the harvest. Verse 39 says, Many Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed with them for two days. You see, one lady, I can't say that she believed that Jesus was the Savior when she went back to town, but she knew he was different. She called him a rabbi. She called him a prophet. She knew that she needed some more of him because she left her water pot back at the well. She knew that she needed to hear some more from him because she left her water pot at the well. They didn't do that back then. That was an important vessel that they had. She left all she had at the well. So she had to come back. You see, we got to come back to the well. We got to leave everything at the well. And we need to go to work. Why? Because just one testimony can bring many to the Lord. You see, she wasn't a theologian. She was a harlot that was changed by a conversation with Jesus. One conversation that she had and she was changed. Think about how many people can be changed by your testimony of who he is in your life. This church would be full if we went to work. You see, I, I, I like reaping. I, I, Doug and I have talked about this many times. Me and him can meet up here and preach our hearts out and nobody move. And then you bring somebody new in here and you bring a reaper in here and everybody moves. You see, I have my part. I know my part. But I do like the reaping when somebody else sows it you see there's a harvest out there that they were distracted by the world they were missing the harvest and jesus is pointing them to them jesus says look yonder if the fields are white they're coming are you ready are you ready for that divine harvest You see, if we can get them into the church, we can let them hear the Word of God, and the Word of God will change them because it says, so when the Samaritans came to him and asked to stay with him, he stayed with them two days, and many more believed because of what? 
because of his word, not because that he was pretty, not because he sat next to a well, not because he could heal, but because of the words he was speaking into their life. If we speak the word of God into people's lives, they become changed. They pray that prayer that changes everything. They come to the altar and lay this world down. That's exactly what they did. They came to the Lord. They came to the cross, and they were changed by the Word of God. It is our responsibility as a church to bring people to the cross. It is our responsibility to go to work and quit being distracted by the things of earth. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe man glory. Y'all, I want, uh, y'all listen to that now. Remember, she wasn't a theologian. She was a harlot. They said to this woman, the woman that came got them, the woman that says, hey, there's a guy out there at the well who knows more about me than I know about myself. There's a guy out there who's different. Y'all got to come see. Now, she knew where the men of the town was. She knew where they hung out. And she went straight to them and says, hey, I got somebody who can change your life. Won't you come see? You see, that, that's not our job to save people. It's our job to bring them to the cross. This woman brought them to the cross. Once they got to the cross, they heard the word of God, they heard the gospel, and what happened? It was no longer about her, and it was all about him. He's the one that changed their life. He's the one that, that, that changed their life so that they could have faith in him. You cannot get into heaven on your grandma's skirt tail. You cannot get into heaven on somebody else's faith. It must be a personal faith. You must know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior individually. Because if you don't, you're going to hell. And it is real. So is heaven if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For they have what? Heard for themselves. It's no longer about her, it's about him. They had heard straight from the horse's mouth, if you will. And they said, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. You see, that divine appointment, that divine offering, led to a divine harvest. When Jesus calls somebody to him, it's not natural. It's supernatural. It's divine. Because he changes death into life. He changes everything. Some sow, some reap, but all rejoice. Every believer must have faith, a faith that is not secondary or dependent on someone else. That faith will cause you to go to work. Are you ready? I know I am. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for, Father, instilling in me the importance of seeing the lost one, to seeing Christians become real Christians. Father, that we go to work. Father, that we come and that we glorify you, that we come that you may be glorified, that we may be changed, that the world may see you through us and in us. Father, I pray for anybody in this room that doesn't know you, Father, that they will know you before they leave this place. Please don't let them leave, Father, before they know you, before they pray that prayer that changes their life. Father, if there's church members here that, that, that are, are using you as secondary, Father, I, I pray now that you convict them, that they can come to the altar, Father, that they can get it right. Father, because the harvest is ready, 
We just need to go to work. Father, help us to shine your light into a lost and dying world. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.